Okay, boys and girls, this video will not be glamorous, uh, but I am going to read uh, the social studies assignment from today, for today. It starts on page 70, and we're going to read through 73. Uh, I wish I could share this with you, um, but I don't have a student book, and this is kind of small for the teacher edition. But anyway, uh, lesson three is called The Plains. Our vocab for this lesson is lodge, sod, scarce, TP, travoy, council, and ceremony. Uh, we'll be going over those as we get to them. Uh, you are there. Second person, point of view, you, physically you, are there. So they're putting you in this. The sound of thunder wakes you and you quickly sit up. But this isn't really thunder. You feel the ground rumbling beneath you. Only then do you know that the sound you are hearing is the pounding hoofs of thousands of buffalo running from your tribe's hunters. You listen as your mother and your grandfather talk about the hunt. Soon, there will be fresh meat to cook and dry. Grandmother has even promised to make you a pair of moccasins from part of a buffalo hide. Uh, and if you look up here, we don't really see these, uh, but hundreds of years ago, the buffalo herds on the prairies were so large that they sometimes blackened the horizon. Uh, there were just so many of them because they weren't being hunted forever. And then they just kept reproducing and reproducing and it just became large. Uh, once they started being hunted, their population, that be the buffalo, went down. Life on the Plains, page 71. The Plains people lived on the interior plains between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains. Uh, so again, right in the middle, kind of the middle of the United States is the Mississippi River. To the west, toward California, about where Colorado and all that are, is the Rocky Mountains. So right in the middle there, that area is the Plains. On fields of grass, they hunted buffalo or American bison. After water, buffalo were the plains' most important natural resource. Millions of these animals once roamed this large region of dry prairie land in North America. Hunting the buffalo. It's not what you thought it was. Just listen. Imagine, imagine hunters coming upon a herd of buffalo. Wearing animal skins, they sneak up on the buffalo. A signal is given. All the hunters yell and the frightened buffalo begin to run. The hunters drive or push them toward the herd, push the herd toward a steep cliff. Unable to stop, the animals fall over the side and are killed. Buffalo were the main source of food for all the Native American groups who lived in the plains. The meat could be eaten raw or cooked. It could also be mixed with fat and berries to make pemmican a dried meat that could be stored. The buffalo gave plains groups what they needed to make clothing, tools, utensils, and shelters. The people used almost every part of the buffalo. They made clothing and moccasins from the skins. They, ca they carried water in bags made from the buffalo's stomach. They twisted the hair into cord, and they even made tools from the bones and horns. Even the hoofs of the buffalo were used to make glue nothing was wasted. So again, when they hunted buffaloes, there again, there were so many of them that they kind of scattered out around the herd and scared them and pushed them and drove them toward a cliff. And as they were running toward the cliff, if the ones in front stopped, the ones behind them would keep, keep on charging them and knock them right off the cliff and they would die. And then that the same thing would happen uh, as they kept on going. And so that's how they hunted the buffalo. They didn't have to spear them or nothing. They just scared them where they went off the edge and they died. They'd have to climb down and get them, but that's how they got the buffalo. Uh, they used every part of it. They used everything, the, the skin, the hoofs. They used the stomachs. They ate the meat. Uh, they used it all. So page 72, farmers and hunters. While they needed the buffalo and shared many customs, they were differences among the plains people. Their ways of life depended in which part, in, in part on where they lived, the people of the central plains. Some plains groups lived on the eastern parts of the plains or the central plains. The Iowa and the Missouri lived there as, as did smaller groups of Sioux, such as the Nakota. 
These groups were both hunters and gather gatherers and farmers. They planted plants and hunted deer, elk, and buffalo. They farmed in the fertile valleys of the Missouri River and the, Pla the Plate River. They grew beans, corn, and sunflowers. At times, groups traded some of their crops for other goods. These Central Plains people lived in villages made up of large round earthen houses called lodges. Each lodge was home to several families. One lodge usually held 20 to 40 people. Each lodge was built on earth over a small pit. In the center was a fireplace under a hole in the roof for letting out the smoke. On the northern prairies, the lodges were covered by sod, a layer of soil held together by the roots of grasses. About twice a year, Central Plains tribes took part in a great buffalo hunt. To reach the distant plains where the buffalo lived, the people had to walk from their villages in the river valleys. Uh, and so these were the Central Plains people, the, the central part of the plain, which would have been the eastern part of the plains, basically right up next to the Missouri, or, I'm sorry, the Mississippi River. Then we had a nomadic society on page 73. Smoke rises from an early morning fire as a Cheyenne woman makes food. Wood is scarce or in short supply. The scarcity of wood means other sources of fuel must be used. So the woman burns dried buffalo droppings called chips. So she's burning, catching on fire, these buffalo droppings. That's buffalo poop. Droppings are poop. So she is burning dry poop. Can you smell it? Yeah. People of the Great Plains. Again, on page 73. The Cheyenne lived in the western part of the interior plains, called the Great Plains. They and other groups who lived there, such as the Kiowa and the Crow, moved from place to place following herds of buffalo. They did not farm the gra dry grasslands where they lived. Their digging sticks could not break up the soil. So they were over to the west, closer to the Rocky Mountains, and their soil was not as good for farming. And so instead of farming, they basically went back nomadic style where they would follow the animals and hunt them. So that's why they didn't, that the farmland wasn't good where they were living. Again, this was closer to the Rocky Mountain side. The Great Plains people built shelters that were easy to move. One such, such shelter was a cone-shaped tent called a teepee. To build a teepee, wooden poles were set in a circle and tied together at the top. Then the poles were covered with buffalo skins. A hole at the top of the teepee let out the smoke from fires. The people also used their wooden poles to make a carrier called a travoy. A travoy was made of two, two poles tied together at one end and then fastened to a harness on a dog. The goods were carried on a buffalo skin tied between the poles. Uh, so obviously they were hunters and gatherers. They didn't have a permanent home. They used a teepee. Why a teepee? It was easy to move, easy to carry. Uh, even to make it easier to carry, they used what's called a travoy. Kind of looked like a, a, a big, kind of like a sled type deal. Uh, they would hook it up onto an animal, and the animal will pull it. So they didn't even have to carry it. So they would put their stuff on there, the teepee, the poles, etc., and, and get it pulled. Uh, so we're going to watch a video, and that's going to explain a little bit more of this. And so make sure you pay close attention to what we just read and the video because that's going to help you on your next Kahoot coming up soon.